Hello, hello. <laughs> greetings from very cold Switzerland. <laughs> uh, greetings from humid Singapore. <laughs> uh, I'm here today with Corinne, my Swiss friend, and i um, so much looking forward to this conversation because we have been, uh, we have had some very, very adventurous times already together in the, in the women's circle. So happy and grateful that we that we share this space today together. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, yeah, maybe you introduce yourself. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So I'm Corinne Conrad Calder. Um, yeah, I'm a soul based coach uh, living in Singapore at the moment, but yeah, born and raised in Switzerland. And I have been well doing women's temple work for eight years now Mm. started really with the academy and yeah I weave that into my work with with women and I also really do more and more embodiment uh, work these days with women really yeah helping women to get into the body men and women so yeah yeah amazing work you're doing I also love your webpage it's rebel heart woman correct Yes. So yeah, 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 my company is called Rebel Heart Woman. Um, yeah, inspired by all the amazing women I get to work with, who have a rebel heart, and and obviously also my own journey. Um, yeah. So the first question I always ask is like, if, you know, the the very very first time you have been to a woman's temple. Do you remember? And can you share? What, what brought you there and how uh, how you experienced this very first time what was the calling mm. yes so what i remember i think the feeling that i had stepping the first time into a temple in corfu right um in in mm. greece was almost like stepping into a warm bubble bath <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how it felt um uh, yeah what led me there is actually it's quite funny because i thought about that today i did a women's circle about a year and a half before that in brazil where i was living at the time and i had done some you know an online thing where i got some reading materials on, on how to do it, a circle and that was that first circle that I did was an absolute disaster <laughs> from A to Z. <laughs> and so what led me actually to Awakening Women was at the time um, a mentor in, in Brazil, Kimberly, Kimberly and Johnson. She then told me, well, if you really want to learn more about how to facilitate women's temples, um, look, there's this woman, Shamali Ardak, um, and she's been doing this work for many years. So she's probably really a good one to, to learn from. And I'm like, yes, that's, that's what I'm going to do as soon as I have the opportunity. And so, yeah, at the time we, we were back in Switzerland for a few months. And that's what really drove me. Like actually from a, a bad experience of having my first circle, I really, really wanted to learn how to do this in a much more skilled way so it could feel good for myself and of course for for the women who would um also would also join mm. yeah and have you been then in a circle in in zurich or did you go straight to uh to the no, summer? straight i went straight to the training i didn't have anything ah. before with the shamali i just went straight in for the, the and at the time it was a week so yeah, and I was just, I knew, yeah. because I, I knew that I want, I had a good experience of being in a women's circle um, about a year before I had my disastrous own women's circle uh, with Sarah Evans Stower in Mexico. And I, I just knew I want to learn how to do this and I want to offer a space like that to women. But yeah, I, I had to learn how. <laughs> Wow, so you went all the way to Corfu. It's like the first experience in an Awakening Woman thing, a yeah. temple. And yeah. um, so that was 2014. So let's just mm-hmm. talk a little bit about this. Uh, and 
what did you expect? Or when you came there, you want to learn about women's uh, temple. Was there anything that surprised you? Um, yeah, I think what surprised me is, well, because I kind of where was on this mission. I just want to learn how to do this in a, in a good, in a safe way. And then what surprised me is obviously how much else I got besides, um, besides learning to become a good facilitator. Mm. Yeah, so that, that was a surprise. I guess for me also, because I have never been even to a temple before, right? So I had, I had no idea what, what the rest of this whole thing would, would be like, the experience. And yeah, so that, that definitely surprised me. How it's, it, because it became like, a, I feel like it activated the whole week, the training, the practices that we did to learn, you know, and, and obviously that we then bring and, and do with, with other women that activated something within me, which then I took in, into life, not, not just as a, as a leader, as a facilitator, as a person, as a human, as a, as a woman. Right. Mm. And that I did not really, well, that was a super pleasant surprise, but I did not really think about that in, in the first place when I joined the training. So in a way, like the moment you enter uh, and you enter the circle or you enter and you did the training, it kind of gave you a different direction or what, 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 what were the treasures you experienced? So how did this influence like your further path? Okay, well, there's so many things and I thought about this, you know, because it is a long time ago, so I need to make sure I don't mix things up because I've been to a lot of different things from Shamli, right? in the last decade. But um, I think what I took from the training, well, first, just what does it actually feel like to come together in a group of women where you feel safe? Yeah, I, I've mm. always had very close friendships and one-on-one -on -one friendships uh, with women. But like women's groups for me were always a bit like, you know, it's very quickly, it can become drama and um, too much talking and just too much. And I actually don't want to be in a women's group, right? When it gets a bit, yeah, like <laughs> everywhere. Um, so that, that focused coming together with other women and then practicing together with other women, like learning look how to hold space i think i didn't even know what that means that term holding space probably before i came to the training but mm -hmm. yeah what does it mean to really listen to someone and not share my own my own opinion about that but then the contrary what does that actually feel like if i can share and no one is gonna give me her opinion right mm -hmm. so th it's both like the the deepening the listening skills what does it actually feel like in the body when someone is really there present listening and um yeah do that for each other so that kind of receiving and giving between women and what that feels like in the body because you can't read that in a manual you've got to experience it viscerally right and so that that's just one example and another thing i was not very familiar with, you know, I did yoga. Yes, I was a yoga teacher at the time. Um, I've done sports and movement all my life. That was important to me. But to move, to intuitively move and kind of dance to music and then bring touch to that experience, my own touch. It's just like how like to become sensitized to become awake in the body it's like what Sean Lee always used to say that we, we are training our instrument the body is like mm. an instrument that you learn to fine tune these are more the things on a personal level that I then took back into life and the beauty you know how <laughs> like I never like I never was really so much into decorating or I mean, yeah, it was important to me that I have a nice environment, but the, the mm. level to detail, and it doesn't have to be much, but like just 
that that devotion to creating also mm -hmm. a beautiful mm -hmm. space and that beauty mm -hmm. can be like a, a, a transformative experience mm -hmm. um yeah things like that this was all pretty pretty new to me um at at the time mm. yeah mm. and there's Thank so you. much more you know <laughs> <laughs> and it's also a long time ago right Uh, and I think one more thing that I really have to mention because, oops, do you hear that? Sorry, that's my dog in background. Rio, <laughs> stop, stop it. Um, feeling, like, be, like allowing myself to feel everything, you know, the good and the bad, riding the mm -hmm. waves of emotions mm -hmm. and not taking them so, se not serious is the wrong word, not getting caught up in it. Like, but like being able to feel it all without getting like swallowed by it. Um, the practices around that, around feeling fully, that was, that is definitely something that I, I took that into my life as a very big practice. And that has had lots of ripple effects, like ripple effects. I'm not sure if I would be with my husband if I wouldn't have had these tools because we went through some serious tough times at the time. And these things really, really, really helped me in everyday life. Yeah. So that's all personal stuff, right? <laughs> It's not, <laughs> yeah. And of course, then you, you learn how to introduce other women to that. That's the beautiful thing of it. But it was a lot of my own practice too. Yeah, I think this I, is a, yes, this I. is such an important detail you mentioned here because this has a lot to do with the work in the temple, you know, too, because this is also where you teach from, you know, how you experience all of this in your body or how you say, how you mention, um, how you train your instrument or as you said, you have done so many other trainings with Shamali as well. And this also has an impact, of course, of your leadership and how you, how you lead this circle. Mm. And um, I have two things I would like to, to pick up. First of all, yes, we embrace feelings and the way we learn how, how to practice with feelings in our circle and also the way we, like, we hand over these tools for the facilitators, how to work in their groups. This has also been life-changing for me and also in my busy life, sometimes I do not even, you know, then all these feelings are coming up but I didn't have any time, but I know, okay, I'm going to be in temple And, and there on Friday, and there I just give space, as much space as I need for all these feelings for me, for my body to process. Yeah. And yeah. This, this was such an anchor in my life too. It was, um, yeah, that was, that, just this practice was life-changing for me. <laughs> yeah. And to the, all the women that then, you know, actually that did come to temple, right? When I finally started my, like this thing is, they, you know, that in becoming in integrity and honest with what you are feeling and what is happening inside mm. of you, that mm -hmm. introspection, like I know, and I've heard that from many women over the years, this was, this is a place where I used to come to meet myself, to be honest with myself, to sh honestly share with others. And, it's a training ground in the temple but of course the effect is that you bring that into real life yeah. right yeah. from from there and um yeah that's that's the beauty of it mm. you know how we bring these tools into real life it doesn't just stay in the temple i mean mm. at least for me it has been like and that's what i've been seeing in in um, in, all, in other women over the years um Yeah, and, uh, uh, and what you also mentioned is, you know, that you, when you explored women's temple or women's group and how you have experienced like being with women before, and I think this, this yoga of sisterhood we practice, our sisterhood manifesto is such a strong, strong pillar, not only, and as you said before, not only for the group itself, for a women's group, but this is something which we can apply Uh, in all yeah. aspects of our life, actually. And this is a culture and a way that we are together, or we support each other, which is so, so powerful. And 
And this also brought us together to another adventure. We have been, uh, I just checked, what year was it? I think it was 2016 or 18. 2018. 18. 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where we yeah. co-created uh, this temple training, women's temple training in Hong Kong. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. That was so beautiful that we could give to women who used to come regularly to my temple the opportunity to then actually get the full training, right? Mm -hmm. And the women who did come, you know, most of them, we then obviously did do women's temple afterwards together as we were a core group of four, five women. Uh, I moved away for a while, then I came back. And then, of course, protests and everything started to unravel mm. in Hong Kong with COVID. And that, um, but yeah, and that sisterhood, these, you know, five women, uh, five of them, you know, we, we continue to practice between us and we are now all over the world and we come together on Zoom. But I mean, I'm not joking. I see them in Zoom. And because we spend so much time physically together, practicing my whole body is just like there's a complete relaxation happening just seeing their faces and you know being together on zoom mm. from all that we've 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 shared you know all the the many experience that we had together including the training <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah mm. if you were to um recommend this training to a friend or you know to women who are looking for any for tools like this what what would you say what how would you it's sometimes it's not so easy to describe what really happens in there no but I think well I probably would ask the the woman first a little bit well what, what what made her aware of the training what is she drawn to what 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 is kind of pulling her in right um and then you know i can elaborate on on these pieces a little bit like it's i i think look if 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 you want to learn the skill of how to really get comf comfortable not not confident full on right away but with time you know <laughs> you, you you get confident and you become more com but comfortable in a way you 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 are pretty quickly because of you, you learn through the training you learn to trust the things that you're going to do with other women afterwards in your own temple you feel it you feel what it does to you and that will give you trust to see that it works yeah mm. so for me like to know that look it's an experien experiential is that the right word like you learn through experiencing you learn through actually doing it yourself and being in it and then on top of that you get of course the theory you get all the the things around you know how to set up a safe container yeah and what's important to set up a safe container how to look after your own well-being when you're a leader all these things yeah that that you all get on top of that um so this is like, if you're looking for something like that, then here you go. But um, there's also an other element. Maybe not everyone, but people can, women can feel drawn to the training. And I know that because we have that as well. They may not even want to facilitate temporal themselves or circles, but they want to just learn more about, you know, how to get in touch with, um, let's fall, call them feminine qualities, I think, you know, or, you know or, or what are the qualities of a feminine leader or feminine leadership, um, you know, like being able to be vulnerable in your leadership, being able to be soft and strong, yeah, allowing yourself to be soft, um, being able to be fierce, you know, and hold and protect that that container and that thing that you're building and that you're devoted to these are other things right and they they are personal as well as um things that you want to learn about um yeah yourself all the things that you want to bring in uh into your life but what i would say is you got to feel a sense of openness to just let the uh, experience of the training work on you mm. you just gotta go and be open to 
engage with the practices and what's going to happen and what you're going to be guided through. And you will open more and more too, right? But like openness is, is definitely key because mm. you want to get the experience yeah, of what that's all like. And from there, so many things will, <laughs> you know, will be activated and it will look mm -hmm. different in every woman's life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this openness, because where the, all these practices are leading to, it's, uh, it's uh, places we cannot talk ourselves into. It's, um, and it's such a, you know, these practices or the way uh, Awakening Woman and Shamali, she developed all these, uh, these guidelines, they're so, they're so accurate and so precise. And you mentioned so many, you mentioned so many, like to say, you know, how to create safe space and um, how to hold space. And you were also talking about touch, mm. you know, the way we, we practice with respectful touch. I just had a temple day yesterday and over here, in the Western Hemisphere, it's dark and, you know, we, we go into the Raunechte and, and um, we just wanted to... and. I thought so I prepared a much different program than I actually did because all just receiving touch and giving touch is such a powerful practice to refill our wells, to relax our feminine bodies, mm -hmm. to, um, to be more home in ourselves. And the way we practice it in our circle is, uh, is very sacred. Yeah. And of course, we always respect our boundaries. And then yesterday, um, then it turned out one of the, the tasks it was to, you know, to also to learn how to, to set boundaries and to learn, oh, no, this doesn't feel good for me. Just do something else. And, and so we ended up practicing around touch the whole day. And it was so amazing. It was just so nourishing. Yeah. Yeah, well, you learn about, you know, the oxytocin, right? Where you talk mm. about the, how touch releases oxytocin in us. And that helps us to relax after periods of stress. Um, and I think what you're mentioning, you know, there's always that inner authority. Everyone is continuously reminded to listen to their inner authority of what feels a yes and what feels like a no so this is also a place to really learn to practice that in yeah. a in a safe in environment um because so many of us have learned to override these first instincts which were which are right yeah often as well and so yeah that i think i know that that has been very important when women come to the temple, that we guide them back to their own self-leadership, mm -hmm. you know, their own inner authority. There's no guru in there. There's, there's facilitators and there's the circle and we learn from each other. Um, but everyone is there and it's got to take, take self-responsibility, right? And I think that is incredibly powerful for women to practice together with other women. Yeah. Mm. And I think that together with other women, like if someone is maybe listening who has had a lot of bad experiencing with other women, you know, a lot of mistrust, uh, a, a lot of not feeling safe uh, mm. around other women, because that is, that is, that is, is the world we live in, you know, and we've all gone through high school and all that stuff. And, you know, we, yeah, this, you you really gonna be held in a in, in a women's temple where people have learned through the awakening women way. It, it it's it's gonna be different. Like you you will be seen and met in in that meet and maybe in that fear as well. And that's I think that's important because I've seen circles where that that safety net was not really there. Mm. always yeah and then it can replicate you can actually a woman's circle then can cause the opposite it, it, mm -hmm. it can create more tension in the body right more mistrust so yeah 
especially nowadays where we have even more and more and more awareness of how all the traumas we carry in our bodies so yeah. the way we are trauma informed and, and, and the way we we guide you to hold space and how to create safe space and uh, how to create a healing space and oh god yeah. i could i could just go on and on because we share so much <laughs> <laughs> so passion in our heart for this work and not yeah. only because of us only because both of us you know um we we see how it works yeah it's yeah we trust years. it and we yeah, see the it, changes yeah. Yeah. In, in women and in many women yeah and i think uh, yeah i know we're gonna add this but i really i want to say that other thing to because that I've seen in many women. So many women carry a, 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 an element of a mother wounding, right? I just, yeah, and, and, or the patriarchy wounding, right? Mm. And learning to mother yourself, getting in touch with your inner mother, like that, that self-compassion, that kindness with yourself, with your own body, I think that is definitely something that women, it was a gift for women's temple. Like I've become so much softer and kinder with mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And in that also, of course, with other people, <laughs> right? Like mm -hmm. with my husband and, and with my, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that inner mothering is definitely something I feel like we don't name it that uh, as such, but this is happening every time you enter mm -hmm. a women's mm -hmm. circle mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. it's in a way actually a lot of trauma like nervous system regulation right mm -hmm. um again we don't really speak to it as such maybe as as in other places but really that's what like, a lot of it is is about that yeah. too yeah. Yeah, yeah, and those days, you know, I, I, the first temple was Shamali, you know, the first temple was for, from her and Helena was 2005, like 18 years ago. Nobody was talking about this 18 years ago. So, no. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And I know now you have, um, you have relocated to Singapore and, um, yeah. and I will also, we're going to end this for today, but we are going uh, to have a, continue our conversation because now you start or soon you will start establishing your temple in yes. Singapore again and in the new year yeah the, yeah yes. and then we're going to check in again. and like to hear how this works and uh... <laughs> yeah thank you mm -hmm. yeah that would be lovely I feel like I got to find the space now and um yeah just begin again you know mm -hmm. and see who who the women will be who join and yeah. want to gather <laughs> thank you so so much it was so lovely to connect with you <laughs> with you too mm. <sighs> well we speak again and um yeah it's a wonderful <laughs> wonderful training <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it's always so it's always so amazing you know to connect with our hearts because we feel yeah. so much passion for this work and we really do yeah Thank All you. Right. Thank you, mm -hmm. everyone. <laughs> Have a bye good bye. day, evening, wherever they were. <laughs> Ciao. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>